Debbie Harry is on the line with us. And uh, good afternoon, Debbie. How are you? Oh, fine, 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 fine. How are you? Well, you we're all okay. Right? Yeah, we're all right. You know, we're getting through the pandemic just like everybody else. How have you been over the pandemic months? I think it's made me a better person. Well, I'm no, sure you were a lovely right. person before. I, I happen to know you were. Uh, Debbie Harry, of course, is the front woman and founding member of Blondie, the pioneering new wave band that has sold, well, new wave, pop, whatever you want to call it, over 40 million albums in a career spanning over 40 years. Now, to celebrate their first ever performance, this is an extraordinary thing. In Havana, Cuba, in 2019, they're now set to release a film later this year, along with the soundtrack EP, which is already out. So the band visited Cuba. So just explain to me, Debbie, why you visited Cuba and what the whole exchange thing was all about. My partner, Chris Stein, has always wanted to go to Cuba. And we were suffering from that embargo and ban, you know, that we couldn't go there. Yeah. Or if we did go, we would have to go by devious routes. And I agreed with him. Of course, I always wanted to go there. I've always liked the music and the culture. And it came to our manager, Tommy Manzi's attention that we wanted to do this. And he's very proactive. And he looked into the idea of becoming a part of this cultural exchange program. Wow. And so... We did it. And not only did we get to play with the Cuban musicians, but we had an associate tour planned called Friends and Family, where we brought our best friends and fans and family members with us. (laughs) So we had this really large entourage. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. What an unusual thing. I think that's great. So it's really a cultural exchange in the kind of old style, really. It really wasn't. We all really loved it. I feel very lucky that we got to do this in this little window of opportunity because now, of course, I know it's not this way for the Brits, but for us, you know, we can't go back there now. But, I mean, it's an interesting thing because they really loved the music. They knew the music. They loved you. They're just crazy for you. I did another interview that sort of came up that how would they know, how would they know your music or how would they know anybody's music? But closest I could come to it was Radio Caroline. Right. There was a time when you had this out-of-country radio thing going on. Right. So, I mean, I think that radio and music, both of these things, they transcend. You know, it's in the atmosphere. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Here's Tim for you. Given the interesting and at times very difficult relationship that Cuba has had with the United States, did you expect to find what you found or did it differ to what you were expecting? I think it was uh, actually a lot better than what I expected to find. And I don't often use this recipe or title or whatever, Mm. naming adjective, soul, simply put, soul, the Cuban soul. Mm. How does this happen? You know, in in such a small area, there's so, it's such a, a big feeling. How much Cuban influence would you say there's been in your music over the years? The way you're able to adapt songs for the Cuban beats. I can't explain it other than it really was a cultural exchange and we are very talented musicians that we worked with. They sort of walked into our sound check and our rehearsal. We ran the song a couple of times with them and that was it. There was a bit of winging it. That's one of the favorite things that I like about when you collaborate with people in a live situation, that things can actually happen and you just sort of go with it. Yeah, you do. Let's hear a couple of tracks from this live EP you're talking about. Here's Blondie with Heart of Glass and the Tide is High, recorded live in Havana in Cuba in 2019. Debbie Harry talking about the EP from which those live tracks came from those two from the accompanying documentary all about Blondie's first ever performance in Havana, Cuba in 2019. Now, when you look back at, what was it, late 70s, early 80s, through the 80s, what do you think when you look back at those days? (laughs) 
Oh, well, it varies from day to day or from whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I wish it was like that again. And I thought, oh, God, that was so naive and so crazy and so wonderful and so inspiring. And other days I think, oh, my God, you can't do that again. Yeah. We had the best of both. This is the best thing to do when you're young is to take chances. And we did. I always thought that you didn't really compromise. You always stayed true to yourself. You somehow kept your integrity all the way through it, in my view. Well, that's very generous of you to say that, you know, because we're all just finding a way through this maze of opportunities or lack of opportunity. We just make our way through. That was a very nice compliment. Thank you. Well, it's true. And, and of course, now you're really there forever, up in people's minds and hearts and what have you. So, I mean, you can't ever go back to having a real job. The only thing I can think I could do would be real estate. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, that you could do that on the side. Here's Tim again for you. Well, no, on the same subject, there's that great little bit in the film where there's a clip of a journalist saying, did you think you'd be doing this still after 40 years? And, and my question is, did you always think you'd carry on making music because you still do clearly and you still enjoy it? Of course. I mean, we just had a show connected with the film at the Tribeca Film Festival where we got to perform live. The first live audience in New York, I'm telling you, it was so moving. I hate to say it, but I felt humble. I'm very fortunate that I've had, you know, some, some of these experiences in my life. Yeah, yeah, I understood. The film, directed by Rob Roth, features narration from Debbie, Christine Clem Burke, about what this trip meant to them, highlights from the two-night live performances and intimate behind-the-scenes moments captured throughout their time in Cuba. And as we go, I'm going to play another track. And the film, uh, how am I saying this? Viva en la Habana. Is vivir, means to live. Oh, OK, just testing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in, shot in a great style, by the way, we should say. It looks brilliant. Yeah, and it's it really separated does. into what uh, several little chapters, fire, water, air. And I love the little um, animation sequences as well. They're brilliant. Thank you so much. You know, Rob Roth is a real genius, and he's been working with us for quite a while, and he just took this project. The opportunity came up, and he swooped in and just did it. He ran around like mad, muttering and, and scratching his head. But, uh, you know, he just jumped in there and he did it. Great job. Yeah. I know that in New York and various states in America, it's kind of getting back to normal. So what's on the horizon for you guys? I mean, obviously promoting this. But yeah. then after that, I mean, fresh tour coming up? It's booked for November with Shirley Manson and Garbage. Besides that, we did talk about putting together some uh, pre-production because we have a bunch of songs sort of on the back burner. Blondie always likes to record, you know. Wow, new stuff is always good. The film is released later this year and the soundtrack of the same name is out right now. I think we're going to play a bit of Rapture and a bit of Dreaming as we go. And Debbie Harry, thank you so much for talking to us. Debbie Harry, everybody. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you.